Okay, what we're going to talk about now is schizophrenia, and we're going to focus on this major mental disorder in this brief module. Uh, schizophrenia is a very common disorder, which is unfortunate because it has devastating symptoms. Roughly a third of people suffering from the symptoms will have an episode and probably be okay with treatment the rest of their life. Another third uh, will suffer chronically from symptoms. And finally, unfortunately, about a third of the people we don't seem to be able to treat well with medication. So it's really important to appreciate the symptoms of schizophrenia. The goals of the module are that you should be able to understand the cognitive and psychological symptoms of schizophrenia, discuss the biological correlates and abnormalities associated with it, both in terms of neurotransmitters and brain structure, and finally discuss the impact of antischizophrenic, which are also called antipsychotic or neuroleptic drugs. Schizophrenia involves a true break with reality, and that includes some of the following symptoms. Hallucinations, which are false sensory experiences, and it could be uh, hearing voices, seeing things that aren't there, having tactile hallucinations, which means you feel might feel something on your skin. So auditory delusions, those are more common than the visual hallucinations, but both can occur. Delusions are false beliefs, and almost all of these beliefs associated with schizophrenia tend to be terrible, you know, that you're an awful person, that you're the devil, that you're being persecuted, and so unfortunately these beliefs um, just add to the distress of the schizophrenic person. Thought disturbance is mirrored by language disturbance, such as clanging, C-L-A-N-G-I-N-G, -N -G, and that's rhyming words, So, and not in a way that makes a lot of sense. Some of the words that they may choose to rhyme are not real words, but what are called neologisms. These are false words that only have a meaning to the schizophrenic. Just as an example, in one case study of a schizophrenic, she believed that she was being uh, persecuted by people she called the Confucia, um, which of course has no real meaning. Word salad means that in severe cases of schizophrenia, the person's language may just be scrambled. A word salad is descriptive because it's as if a person spoke in a paragraph and you threw all the words into a blender and just mixed them up. You can't follow the person. An impoverished speech, just kind of uh, not responding to questions or brief responses. Tangential thinking also means a person may bounce from topic to, to topic, and the bouncing around may seem kind of random in terms of associations. And very impaired cognitive abilities, lower performance in just about every single cognitive domain. And I can talk about those symptoms, but to me it's much more um, interesting and much more moving to see a case study of a schizophrenic. Gerald, who is a schizophrenic who's our case study, suffers from schizophrenia and uh, exhibits a lot of the thought and language disturbance symptoms that we just talked about, even though he's still on antipsychotic drugs. And uh, to see this, just go to YouTube and type in Jerry, J-E-R-R-Y dot M-O-V, and that will take you to that case study. Correlates of schizophrenia include an excess of the neurotransmitter dopamine. There are others that are mentioned in the text, but dopamine seems to be central in understanding schizophrenia. Um, and anti-schizophrenic drugs such as um, neuroleptics, antipsychotics, antischizophrenics, typically lower dopamine. And again, for roughly two-thirds of people who are schizophrenic, it can help control those symptoms and bring some relief. Um, there are some brain abnormalities in long-term schizophrenia. Um, enlarged ventricles are often found, and uh, ventricles are the spaces in the brain that are typically filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Those are larger than normal in schizophrenics. There are also abnormalities in the temporal lobe and hippocampus. Those are smaller in schizophrenics than in non-schizophrenics. Brain abnormalities also include reduced neurons in the prefrontal cortex, so not as many as one would expect in that important part 
of the frontal lobe and abnormalities in the thalamus. Also, abnormalities in the speech perception and um, processing center. So just to kind of summarize, I have a diagram that goes over that, and it just basically shows um, everything that I just talked about just um, in another format, in pictorial format, which shows those larger-than-normal ventricles that might be putting pressure on brain tissue. Um, hippocampus and adjacent re regions are reduced in size. Um, and so things like the hippocampus and thalamus that usually process information and kind of filter it out, those are damaged, which leads to a complaint of schizophrenics, which is kind of everything hits them with equal force. They're not able to filter out things in the environment. Types of onset include reactive, where symptoms begin at once, and process, where symptoms become worse over time and process where the symptoms have a slower, more gradual onset actually has a worse prognosis than reactive. So um, unfortunately, if the person is um, process-oriented, in other words, these symptoms happen slowly over time, it's less likely that they'll have a milder form of schizophrenia and be able to push through. Um, the number of reoccurrences of schizophrenia also is negatively related to recovery. However, the introduction of antipsychotic drugs has really improved quality of life for many schizophrenics. So some are able to move out of, um, you know, uh, places where they're closely supervised and don't have quality of life. Okay, that concludes our session on schizophrenia, and I hope you learned a lot about this important um, disease and how critical it is to our understanding of this mental illness.